For this, I would probably go back over the book dye first. Um, and I'm going to show you how to preserve all of these areas. And it's kind of just the same thing that you did to cover up the lines. You're just using a bigger brush. So all the things that you've already dyed that you want to stay clean, um, you're just going to wax over them the same way that you did with the lines. So I'm going to hold this in my, in my wax. kind of hard you want to make sure that if you have anything to dye you need to do it as soon as you can because you kind of can't do this step if you have wet dye but if there's something you're happy with then by all means wax over it and then you can keep dyeing on your fabric in other places and don't forget to have your piece of newspaper too. that was resourceful too yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing, hold it in my wax for five seconds or so, and wipe it on here, and then I'm just going to go over the spots that I dyed. And remember, this wax doesn't last very long when you put it on the, when you put it on the cloth, so you can do like maybe two, two little strokes and then you have to put it back in the wax. And the way you can tell, um, when you do this, you want to try to start in a, like maybe at the top and then work your way down so that you remember better what you've done because it's kind of hard to tell after a while. But if you're really not sure, you can feel it and it's waxy. It doesn't feel like the rest of it. Like this feels like cloth and then this feels waxy. So, and it should be, um, it shouldn't be hot anymore after you've done it for a little while. It dries really fast and cools down really fast. You only wanna wax the places that are dyed. Don't wax anything that's white because then you can't dye it anymore. So only wax your colored places. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to put wax back on top of what you've already put wax on, if that makes sense. Like you can just work inside the lines and keep them clean. The more that you pile on wax, like if your brush has cooled off and you just keep brushing, keep brushing, keep brushing, all it's going to do is create layers and layers of caked on piled up wax, and that's going to be more likely to flake off and peel off your design. So just getting that one really good layer of hot wax seeped into your fabric, and you should be good. Your brain. Yeah. And just be slow, you know, be careful. Definitely don't ever have your finger near that silver part of the brush and just go slow. And once you've got everything waxed that you want, then you can move on and you can do your background and you really could just work all in these little different parts and not worry about it spilling. Yeah. And if you dye again today, like if you dye the fabric again, because you want it to be darker, then don't wax over it today mm -hmm. wait for it wait till tomorrow for it to dry only wax dry spots mm -hmm. that little corner we dyed yesterday but i realized there was a little bit missing right there so i waxed around it and that one white space i'm going to go back and dye it so it's very tiny but just really inspecting your batik and making sure you get everything looking how you want it to look working inside those little areas big brushes for big areas small brushes for small areas Mm-hmm. Do y'all have any questions about this part? So you're welcome to, with your batik, you can dye over it again if it's still too light and you want it to be a little bit more bold and darker. You could go ahead and do this if you like it and you're happy with it and you just need to do like your background or do other places. Even if you don't only have your background left, it would be a good idea to do some of this. Um, if you just have like a few things, like how Haven has like a few things done over here and still needs to do more. Mm-hmm.